Tyler, I love the start to Scream 6. You get that brutal kill sequence, and we see Ghostface on mass. How was it kind of following the formula of these starts, but also setting new ground and trying something different with this opening? That's sort of the, the fun and the goal of the opening, right? I feel like the expectation is so high with what the opening of a Scream movie should be and has to achieve. Obviously, just starting from literally the first the first movie, which to us, I think, is one of the most perfect sequences ever filmed, the opening of the original Scream. Um, and so I think the goal, first and foremost, is to be scary. And I think the other thing, and look, Guy and Jamie, the writers, they just have, a, I think, a real... Um, a real understanding, a deep, deep understanding and love of the franchise. But I think they also, um, as uh, as fans and then as writers, also have a real clear sense of what the audience is expecting. And so they are always, I think, just hitting all of those, playing all of those different notes and pulling all of those different levers. And for us, look, reading five and reading six, I think it's it's that moment and then the reveal that we're kind of most excited about and the the opening of this is like one of the greatest most finely tuned bits of script writing i think we've we've ever read it's such a cool sequence yeah it turned out great and matt can you talk about just the attitude of you two going into this after the success of 2022 scream because you know seeing how well that was received by the audience i'm sure that gave you a lot of confidence going into scream six I don't know if it gave us a lot of confidence. I don't think we are. I don't think we have the ability to uh, feel that. Uh, <laughs> but I do. True story. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what is that? Uh, what is that confidence thing that you speak of? <clears throat> but I think that I think that the I think that the the you know joking aside, I think that the 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 kind of family that we built making Scream 5 and the, that whole, you know, from Guy and Jamie, the writers, to the cast and the producers, it's like everybody involved. It, just, it was just such a wonderful experience. And I think going into Scream 6, we kind of all felt that, like, let's go do this again. And let's not try to repeat what we did before, but let's have the confidence to go do our version of another one that goes the exact opposite direction. And I think there was a real kind of leap of faith amongst everybody involved creatively to go do like, whereas Scream 5 was very much about the previous four movies and how that, how, <clears throat> how our movie was going to be tied to those. Scream 6, I think on every level felt like, well, let's go do one that's just kind of like a little bat shit and a little out there and gonzo. And that was you know, that was kind of RMO going into it. We talked to a lot of the cast about those ideas and it like, hopefully that's what comes through is that it feels a little bit, a little grimy, a little bit left of center. I love that. And, and Tyler, kind of building off what Matt said, um, one thing that's been remarkable about the Scream franchise is there's this in-universe reverence for the events of the first movie. We're still feeling the after effects of that initial murder spree. Do you feel like the franchise can kind of go outside that lens or would that kind of be missing the point? Because everything just goes back to that route. That's a good question. I mean, I, I think that, uh, I think part of it is hard to not pay. It's hard to make us to tell a scream story without paying back and being reverent of that, of that movie and of the events of that movie. I think, and look, I think part of that, I don't know if you'd call it a hang up necessarily, but it was such an effective movie and, and meant so much to to all of us, you know, when we when we first saw it. I think it was influential in in ways that are sort of too too deep and nuanced and numerous to really to really begin to list. And so I think that it is like in us that movie. It is like so much a part of the DNA of what we love about being storytellers and what we love about watching, watching movies. I think um, that the original scream, I think flexed a muscle for us as audiences that we hadn't really had flexed in that way before. And so it's hard to not, I don't think, I think it's hard to not draft off of it in, in some way, but I think that it's one of the fun challenges of these, of, of 
making a screen movie and now having done two is like, how do you play in that sandbox in a really original way? And I think because the movies are so self-referential, I'm not sure you'd be able to tell a story without at least attempting a nod at what has has come before. It feels like it would be oddly maybe out of step with uh, with the franchise. But who knows? I mean, it's we've we've taken some crazy risks that we didn't think would work, and and somehow have landed. So maybe anything's possible. <laughs> Love that. And Matt, uh, Hayden returning as Kirby was so exciting in this movie. And uh, I was wondering if you could speak to your use of legacy characters, because what's impressed me is that they you actually bring these characters back. They have arcs, they have development, and they're not just there for the marketing purpose. They're, they're also blending in and building that next generation of, you know, the great cast you guys have assembled for five and six can you speak to kind of using those returning characters effectively yeah i think you know i mean we treat all characters like they're characters it's just it's part of the way we approach every movie we do and or not like they're like real full people you know it's not just like the cameo thing and um so much of screamed kind of to your previous question is about legacy and is about how the past affects the present and so on and so there's this, again, meta thing of, you know, in the last movie, it was with like Nev and Gail or I'm sorry, Nev and Courtney and David. And then now bringing Hayden in, it just feels like it it ties it together in a way that makes hopefully these two movies that we've made and the original four that Wes made feel like a piece of a whole, which to us is one of the things that I think as fans we love, because then you can go watch them and watch them like in any order and go like, oh, these aren't just standalones and they don't discount, you know, things that happened. It's all a story about people who are affected by a single event that happened, you know, 25, 26 years ago. And to Hayden specifically, we had wanted to bring her back in Scream 5 because, you know, ourselves, like much of the at least online Scream fandom are big Kirby fans. But we felt like in the version that would have happened in Scream 5, it would have been too much of a cameo, kind of what you're talking about. And yeah. and us and producers and Jamie and Guy agreed that if we're going to bring Hayden back, because we talked to her during Scream 5, that we have to do Kirby justice. And so we all kind of agreed with Hayden, let's just put a pin in this. And if we're lucky enough to make a Scream 6, we'll actually have Hayden be a character and, or Kirby be a character. And and so, you know, when we got lucky enough to be able to do Scream 6, Guy and Jamie wrote this great this great script where she was an FBI agent and it instantly clicked. And I don't think any of us, I know at least for Tyler and me and Chad who couldn't join us, but none of we did not expect her to be an FBI agent, which is, I think, why we loved it, because it made sense. You just went, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. she was like that rebellious kid and now she's an authority but i understand why that happened and it makes it such an interesting arc for her off-screen story that we didn't get to see and then starting this movie to see where she goes awesome and tyler my last question you know this movie's wild there's multiple ghost faces how was it kind of choreographing the fight scenes were they kind of tied to you know whoever was under the mask at that point no we actually talk a lot about how when you put on the mask, um, you actually become Ghostface. That it's that Ghostface is this other kind of character. That there's this there's this power. There's this sensibility. There's this um, this kind of psychotic energy that uh, that you imbue when you put the mask on. So it's really about a character becoming Ghostface instead of a character putting on a Ghostface mask. Um, and so I think I think what that does, and it's one of the reasons why I think Ghostface has become such a such an iconic slasher, right? And and sort of can stand shoulder to shoulder with, you know, Freddie and Jason and and Leatherface, right? It, he he's just this imposing thing that feels otherworldly at times and kind of superhuman in 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 his power, but at the end of the day, is you know very human when that mask when that mask comes off. Um, and I think that that allows us to really, I think, bend the rules a little bit, right? And and have some fun with how big and crazy and gonzo the set pieces can can be. Um, that's 
at the end of the day for us, it's about creating an experience that is always really thrilling and really fun. And for as much as, you know, you have to set set up a series of rules and, and kind of create some guardrails for yourself so that the movie makes sense and so you're not just defying wild leaps, you know, wild logic at all times, but that you're you're not creating such a strict sense of rule that you're not able to like really go crazy and and have fun and and really like dial it up sometimes to an absurd level and i think you know that that for us those are the movies that we're being honest like that's the stuff that we love to watch so having the 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 resources and you know the story and the cast and and certainly max who was the stunt double that was or the stunt stunt performer that was in the ghost face costume you know the, the majority of the shoot um just like being able to cut that that performer loose to do like to just go to go full force all the time was really really fun and not having to pay too much mind and too much attention to well this is actually this person under the mask so they'd fight differently it's ghost face when you're on the run from ghost that character is brutal and is terrifying regardless of who's who's under the costume <laughs>